Hello and welcome to the Isto James channel. I am Isto James and today I'm giving you some tips and tricks on how to make a really cool custom shoe. So no matter if you're a beginner, intermediate, pro, or you've done this before, these tips, these tools, these tricks, everything that I'm gonna share with you are going to help you make a really great product where you can actually wash it, it's durable, and it's gonna look really good. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Uh, the first thing that I always do when I get the shoe is I wanna make sure that I prep it the right way. So what I mean by that is, I usually put a, a shoehorn or shoe tree in here. Some of these shoes actually come with one already in it, depending on which brand you get. Uh, so fortunately, this one already comes with it and I'm gonna use that. And some of these shoes sometimes come in a little bit wrinkly or, or bent, if that's the case, hot steam, these are not super expensive and they're a lifesaver with this. You can just steam out the shoe. As long as it's canvas, it's gonna smooth it out and you don't have to worry about burning it with an iron or anything else in that sense. Then of course, we're gonna remove the shoelaces and put that in. So let's get that going. Okay, so now that I have it prepped, I didn't have to steam this shoe, fortunately, but if you ever need it, again, super handy. And I don't need the shoehorn either. So we're done with those things. Now our shoe's prepped. The next question is masking tape. To use it or not use it? Um, I'm 50-50 on this. I will use it just so I can show you this particular thing, but honestly, trust yourself. If you have a steady hand or not, really that's the only reason to use a mask tape if you just don't trust yourself. So with this design, I'm going to mark off some of the stuff so we can get the design going. I'll see you in just a minute. All right, so the reason for the masking tape, again, you want a straight line, but when you put this masking tape on, you want to make sure that it is good and on the shoe, because if any paint leaks into that, it completely def defeats the purpose. So that's why I like to avoid using masking tape if I can. But for the sake of showing you, we're gonna do it. So since we're making this a number two pencil, I'm gonna have the black lead, and then we're going to have the, the wood part of the pencil, then the yellow part, then the metal part, and the eraser. So we're gonna do this all up in easy sections. But what I wanna show you here is how to prep your paint. This is so important. I already got my colors. Now when you're using these paints, I wanna show you that Angelus is probably my most favorite company to work with. Uh, they make really great viscous uh, paint and it really is good for leather or even the canvas shoes. But since this is a simple project and we're using canvas, you can use basically any type of paint that you want. Uh, if you go to Michael's or any kind of craft store, you can get the, the cheaper paint. I got myself this nice 36 piece multicolor set and it's going to be more than enough for doing what I need here today because I got all the colors that I want and it's a good enough quality paint that if we prep this the right way, it should still look really good. The next part of that is this, the GAC. So Golden GAC, this stuff's a miracle worker when you're working with fabrics, shoes, anything else. I'm going to mix this as a medium into my paint here, and this is gonna help that uh, really get absorbed into the fabric, and it's going to make it so you can wash it later. So it becomes like this nice rubbery paint where it doesn't chip and crack, but it actually flexes and bends with the shoe. So you're gonna get a lot of durability out of that. When I mix this into the paint, and then we're gonna be ready to go. I did pick my colors. Let's see how this turns out. Well, now that we have the medium mixed in there, the GAC is mixed in with our paint, we can start painting. Now, 
I always like to do lighter colors first and darker colors last, and especially in instances like this. Because that way, if you do mess up or maybe the, the paint bleeds through, it's okay. Because especially with this one, since we have black, we are going to be able to cover up that mistake if we end up making one. So the next thing is brush selection. I My favorite brushes to use are just the angled straight brushes. If you can see that in the camera there, um, we have so many different selections that you could do for this kind of paint, um, depending on how detailed you want to give this. Honestly, this might be the only brush you need for a project like this. As long as you have that medium in there, we want to make sure that you it's it's viscous enough. If you don't happen to use any of these mediums that I've suggested, you can just mix water in with these, but you want it to have a nice viscosity about it so it's almost liquid, like it's ink running off the brush. And with these nice angles, you can keep with a straight line as you go through. So, ooh, and that's the wrong color. <laughs> All right, we're gonna do the wood color pencil part first. And as we put this in, I'm gonna be real careful not to put too much of the, the, the first brush stroke on there because it's really wet and it's a lot of paint. But as the paint brush is naturally running out, then I'll go over to the masking tape side just to avoid any kind of heavy runs so it doesn't sneak underneath that masking tape there. And I'm gonna just keep going back and forth and I'm gonna watch my edges here. And boom, bam. Now that we have that color in, you could choose to do a second layer if you want, but because I'm using this medium, it, it's, it's pretty well and evenly spread throughout the whole thing. The next step that I have to do, especially if you are using that medium is, you need a blow dryer or a heat gun because that's what you're gonna use to set it. Once you use the heat to set it, it's part of the requirements for that particular brand or that particular medium, but that really helps lock it in so that paint doesn't go anywhere again. So you can wash these shoes later without losing any of the color and not have any cracking. So I'm gonna do that and I'll be right back and see you in just a second. Never mind, we got right here. Ah. Let's put the heat on it. And now that I've actually hit this with the heat gun, I realized that some of it has dried up and I will need a second layer. So I'm just gonna add that real quick. And if you need to do it yourself on your shoes, please do as many layers as you need, all right? All right, now that that's nice and set in, I'm gonna remove the masking tape and just see how we did, shall we? All right, looks like it came out pretty good. There's the first part of our pencil. So what we're gonna do now is continue up down the shoe. I'm gonna use the black for last. Like I was saying, I wanna use those dark colors last. So I'm gonna tape up the shoe again, and then we're gonna lay down some yellow. And I don't think I need to talk much for that, so let's just watch. As I'm applying this color, I do want to imply though, when we put this main color on, I, when it's fresh and full of paint, I usually go into the middle and then when it starts running a little low, I want to emphasize this point here is when we get to this masking tape part, I'm going to stroke against it so that way we make a nice defined line. If I start painting right up next to it going this direction, you're going to get paint underneath that masking tape. So just as an extra 
security precaution to help yourself, it's better to go from the tape and bring it down onto the shoe. That will help make nice, solid lines. All right, let's go back to watching. I also want to point this out. I'm getting really close to the tongue here. We are going to make it all yellow, but I do want to put a little bit of masking tape just to cover up the logo. That way we don't get too much paint on that. And then I'll come back with a finer, smaller brush to refine that area. And that's what I would, this is why I love using the straight tip brush, especially because once we get to this part right here, I can actually load my brush up, make sure it's even, evenly full of paint, but I can just, this is where we're talking about the steady hand here. If you want, you can go back and put masking tape over this too, or you could trust yourself. And if you just go along the line here, you can take that edge all the way up to the rubber sole. You can put it right here against that and just pull along with it. This brush will do almost all the work for you if you're patient. And as I'm laying all this down, I wanna make sure all my paint is evenly spread across the shoe. And then we will go back when we're done heat gunning it or blow dryer if that's what you're using and make sure we don't need a second layer. As you're painting this, I go over the eyelets here. I don't mind getting, getting paint on them. In fact, I like it a little bit better because I get the paint down in there. I have a way to clean this up and I'm gonna show you that at the end. So don't worry about getting a little messy on this part because we have an easy cleanup process that I'll show you in a little bit. The next tip I want to tell you just before I put a heat gun on this, try your best not to get the paint inside the shoe. Uh, it just looks cleaner in my opinion. Plus if you're wearing white socks or anything with it, there's a good chance at least the first few times you wear them, that paint could rub off a little bit and then get all over your socks. So I like to go bring it right to the edge and then leave the inside purely original. That way it doesn't mess with the overall integrity of the shoe. All right, let's put some heat on it. So again, as I put the heat on it, some of it did thin out and wear away, so it looks like we will have to put a second coat. But the one thing I wanna get in here is do this tongue. And this is the perfect time to do it because at least this is dry enough for me now to get in here without getting paint everywhere. So let's do the tongue.
So I know we got through this pretty quick. If you don't feel you have a steady enough hand, you can always, always go grab some more masking tape and recover up this line. Just make sure that part of the shoe is dry. You don't want to rip off any wet paint to go with it or ruin any of the progress that you've made towards it so far. Uh, I've done this for a while, so I'm pretty comfortable with a steady hand here, but you do please whatever's comfortable for yourself. All right, I'm gonna get back into it. We are almost finished with this. I do want to send out a reminder though to anybody watching. If you are using the Golden GAC 900, please use a well-ventilated area. I normally do this outside. I am not normally here, but I just wanted to show it to you guys. Uh, or wear a mask, because there are still chemicals involved when you're heating it up. So please be careful. Make sure you're using a ventilated area. And the last step of the design is we're gonna put the number two pencil symbol here right on the edge now that this is dry enough. I use just a fine liner marker. You can get these at any craft store like Michael's things as well. They're not overly expensive. Uh, I find that using markers instead of paint here really helps you keep a fine, nice line. You can use a thinner brush as well and if you do that, make sure you just have, uh, it's very viscous, you still have the medium and everything in there as well. So it comes off smooth, it doesn't come off looking chalky or anything like that. But again, your best option is using the fine liner pencil, or pen, excuse me. So what we'll do is go in here and we'll just put That way, it's legible, it's nice, it's neat, and you're good to go. The final thing that I'm going to show you is how we clean this up. If you get yourself some rubbing alcohol and some cotton swabs, this is the best way, hands down, to make sure that you have a beautiful, nice looking project. So what I do is I'll take that and I'll just go over by the eyelets or the rings now I like to use the 91%. This stuff is strong, it's good, it's effective, and you can really just clean up these rings. All right, so the final step, we're going to waterproof it. I did finish cleaning up the, the soles as well with your Q-tip and your alcohol. That's another great way to keep everything nice and clean and uh, in shape. Looks pretty good. The next step, like I said, is we just waterproof it. I got this Kiwi sneaker protector, but you could use any kind of sneaker protector. It doesn't matter really which brand. Uh, I'm gonna do this outside though. I can't do this one inside on video. Uh, I'm gonna do a couple layers of this outside and then you're done. So I hope these tips and tricks will help you have beautiful, long-lasting projects. That's all for me this time around, so I hope you learned something. And whether you're sitting on the toilet or in bed just watching this video for fun, hey, thanks for checking us out. We like it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share with your friends if you found this helpful. And until next time, we will see you later.